Um, so <laughs> uh, it took me a lot of prayers and courage po just to stand up here in front in, in front of you. Kasi po mahiyain po ako sa totoong buhay. <laughs> Di lang po talaga halata. Pero mahiyain ako sa totoong buhay. So when I was hesitant at first when when Ate Jinky and Pastor Kathy approached me and asked me about my testimony. But then I hear the word of God, the voice of God that says, obey. <laughs> Obedience is better than sacrifice. So I am here to share you my testimony. Uh, if makakabigay yon, lahat naman ang testimony natin, hindi natin dapat kinikip. Sabi nga ng Lord, diba, isa sa mga command niya, that we should share it to the world to glorify His name. So, isa-share ko po sa inyo yung testimony, ang programa pong ito. <laughs> Ay, hindi ang ko. <laughs> sa mga batang makikinig. <laughs> Gabay, magulang po. <laughs> Patnubay lang magulang ay sobrang kailangan ko. <laughs> Sorry pa, Pastor. <laughs> Sorry po, mahiyain po talaga. Um, so this is my testimony, my life testimony. I am Jane Vergara. My life testimony is never unique. There are lots of Christians who has the same testimony as what I have. But I believe that mine beca became beyond perfect when God filled my empty heart once again. I was born and raised by Christian parents. I used to have my snacks with prayer of thanks, recited Bible verses, and sing worship songs with my family. Mine was not merely a private religion. Church life shaped the weekly rhythms of my childhood. The Sunday school teachers and eventually youth group leaders helped me in my journey with God, and God blessed me with talents as I became a worker in his vineyard. But no matter how far you think you have become in your walk with the Lord, his adversary will always drag you down to steal and destroy what God has started in you. I walked away and left my fate. The world got the most of me. I turned my back from the Lord and felt like I became worthless. I was in college when I thought I can escape from my dad's sight. I started to cut classes, learned to drink alcoholic drinks, and even smoking. My parents did not have any idea of, of my doings. I knew that God sees me, but in spite of that, I never cared. I know he knew these secret vices. From then on, I gave, that, that I, gave, I gave the thief a foothold until he finally took over and ruled my life for a period of time. From an innocent Sunday school student to a happy-go-lucky lady of the world, as I succumbed to these te temporary pleasures from the world, things went from bad to worst. I knew in my heart that God was always watching over me. He was there every moment of my rebellious life, providing me a way out of every temptation. It was me who kept on ignoring his voice until I totally strayed away from him. James came to my life. Pag si James may music. Our youthful desires caused us to engage in fornication, premarital sex, and I got pregnant. I was confused and scared. I cannot tell my parents about my pregnancy. I am sure that my dad will become furious the moment he learns about this. They worked hard for me to have my law degree. That the thought that I have failed my dad brought shame and fear in my heart. I was so lost, depressed, and hopeless. It was only the thought of having James beside me that gave me relief and hope that at least I will never face this battle alone. And I forgot about God. I forgot that God can be my refuge in times of trouble. I relied on the thought that James will help me whatever happens. 
but I was so wrong. It was as if the world came crashing down on me when I found out that James was in love with someone else. He eventually left me. He eventually left me and our child for another woman. This time, I have no one to turn to. As I lay down crying on my bed, I thought about everything, every pain I have caused the heart of the Lord. His heart cried out, cried out not because of my turning away from him, but because he knew the pain that I have to go through because of my unguided decisions. I realized then that I was now facing the consequences of my sins. I felt like I was covered in darkness with no one to turn to. I cried out loud. A feeling of numbness enveloped my whole being. I felt like there was no more blood running through my veins. My world stopped. I felt so hopeless and worthless. For nine months, I hid my pregnancy from my family that, that even up to now, I never could explain how I was able to do it. What I know was I needed to be brave for my unborn child. Since James was nowhere to be found that time, I was all alone during my pregnancy. I did all my checkups alone in secret, all by myself, without any help. It was so hard for me to carry all these ups, all these responsibilities. I was working in the morning and I was a law student at night. The thought of quitting my studies crept me, my mind and it caused me so much pain because I would probably give my dad a heart attack if I confess about my pregnancy and quitting law, law school at the same time. But God was indeed faithful and full of grace. He never left me nor abandoned me. He pursued me on all the seasons of my life to complete what he has started in me. My family didn't know that I gave birth to my Sam. I hid my daughter from them, rented an apartment, and hired a nanny. I visited them every day, but to sleep with Sam at night was a luxury. I could not afford for fear that my parents might find out, and it hurt me so much. It was a trying time for me when Sam was sick. I couldn't go and take care of her because I was afraid that if they find out about Sam, they would kick me out of the house. As a mother, this is the most painful situation I have to go through. There was even a time when Sam had fever and needs to be rushed to the hospital, but I couldn't go. Instead of me embracing and carrying her, and bring her to the doctor, I have to ask the nanny to do what a mommy should have done for her child. I painfully contented myself by just asking for updates on Sam's fever. It came to a point in my life that everything was too much for me to bear. I turned and ask the Lord to forgive me. For the longest time, I refused to turn to him because of shame, but this time I turned to him in humility. I cried out to him and asked him to fill my emptiness and make me whole again. I suffered the consequences when I walked away from God's grace. I got pregnant. James left me consequences when I walked away from God's grace. I got pregnant. James left me for another woman. James never 
James never forgot about his responsibilities for Sam. He continued to send his support, but I still felt the pain of raising Sam alone. As I surrendered my life to the grace of the Lord, I felt the Lord touching my heart once again. Though forgiveness was difficult during those times, God helped me get through with it. God gave me the courage to decide to bring Sam home, even without a father to introduce to my family. Though my mind keeps telling me that this will definitely upset my dad, the Lord gave me the strength to go through with it. He reminded me how he shut the mouth of the lions during the time of Daniel. I thus brought Sam home and confessed everything I've done. This came as a huge surprise for my family. But amazingly, God has prepared their hearts as they welcome Sam with open arms and even love her beyond my expectation. Every time I see my daughter, she reminds me of God's grace and mercy that most fails to see. God is still in the business of restoring lost, broken, confused lives. Sam is now my spiritual marker, a proof that God can still reset our lives. Na pwedeng ulitan. God helped me pick up all the broken pieces of my life. I pursued my law degree, and with the grace of God, I finally graduated my Bachelor of Laws in the year 2012. God has restored my relationship with Him, with my family, and every day since then, I kept asking the Lord to bring James back to our lives. That even it was seemingly impossible for James and I to be reunited, I still pleaded and believed that the Lord can restore and make my family complete. Until one day, James messaged me and saying how he's sorry for everything and wanted us to be with him that he wants to fix our family. I was hesitant at first. Naisip ko baka ginagancho na naman ako nito. <laughs> Ito na naman. <laughs> but then who am I to well, who am I to oppose? This is what I ask from the Lord. We decided to meet and talk about being together. By that time, Sam was 3 years old. God answers prayers and nothing is impossible with him. Prayer really works. James and I got married and are now living together as a married couple here in UAE with our Sam. James and I are serving the Lord through our ACCI family. Our walk with the Lord is, is still a work in progress, but I know in time both of us shall walk like Jesus walked. I shared my life testimony for everyone to have the courage to go back to God, to learn how to surrender their life to Him, and finally to pray without ceasing. In my life, I have proven myself many times that prayer indeed works. I was once lost. God pursued me, picked me up, and restored me. Kaya nga mga kaibigan, naniniwala ako na pwedeng ulitan kay Lord. Sabi nga niya sa Isaiah 1.18, Come, let us reason together, says the Lord. Though your sins are as red as scarlet, I can turn them white as snow. Though they are red as crimson, they shall turn as wool. I am Jane Vergara Galinato. Married to James, the man I loved and have prayed for. Blessed, blessed with our beautiful Sam as a living testimony of God's immeasurable love, grace, and mercy. And now receiving another blessing of life. I am now two months pregnant with another bundle of joy for me and James and Sam. 
1 Corinthians 13, 7 says, Love never gives up, never loses faith, is always hopeful, hopeful and endures through every circumstance. To God be all the glory.